Hello, good evening. It is now 1219, 1219 here in good old Knoxville. You're probably wondering why is this girl sitting in a bathroom or what looks to be a bathroom and you're right because this is one of the places in my house right now to where my parents who are asleep can't hear me ramble and talk and it's got decent lighting so here we are. It is what it is. Let's get started. Um, I just kind of wanted to sit down and basically kind of hash out certain feelings and emotions that I've been dealing with these past few couple of months or even I guess the past year or so as well and it's a subject that I believe a lot of people deal with that I personally see a lot of people in my life deal with and I just kind of want to give my perspective of what's been going on in my life as well as things that I have learned along the way to maybe just kind of provide some perspective, help someone else out, and to just kind of maybe start a conversation regarding this subject because I think it's actually pretty interesting and it's definitely something that I think is very prevalent nowadays. Before beginning this though, I do kind of want to just put a little disclaimer out there. By no means am I a psychologist or a doctor. Um, any kind of tips, advice, anything that I might say in this video, just take it with a grain of salt. Just know that you can interpret this video how you wish. This is just me rehashing my personal experiences, getting this out there because I think this kind of catharsis is very helpful to me and I would like to just be able to share my experiences with others and kind of hear what others have to say back. So let's get started. So I kind of want to start off today by talking about people pleasing, which is something that I, as well as countless of other people that I've known, consistently struggle with on a pretty much daily basis. It's something that I've kind of believed that has always been a part of my person, um, even from a young age. Looking back now, I can see it more, um, but I really haven't, I guess I haven't really come to a realization that, yes, I am a people pleaser up until these last couple of years. Um, so obviously I've just been kind of sitting down kind of trying to do a little bit of research on the psychology behind people pleasing, why it exists, where it comes from, um, what are the characteristics of people pleasers, and most of all how you can recover from being a people pleaser which is something that I am still very much learning, still very much new at because at this point in my life I'm 23 years old and I'm fresh out of college, I'm seven months as a new grad. I'm registered nurse and I've been learning a lot of this along the way because I'm at that point where I realize I'm like okay I'm already 25 years old I'm already a quarter of a century old and I have spent a lot of time a lot of time doing things or saying things that I may have personally not agreed with or personally not have wanted to do and it has robbed me of my personal joy and happiness and I would I just want to correct that. I want to be more self-aware. I want to learn to love and respect myself in a way that is healthy and just be a general more happier joyful person to kind of help others do that as well. So as I kind of stated I've already been kind of just like looking at videos, looking at different um, speakers and psychologists and other writers and other people pleasers like seeing what they have to say about um, people pleasing and just all that in general. Um, so just kind of hashing out what I have found so far. People pleasers over time. You feel this general sense of being disrespected. You feel violated and you can often feel disconnected from your life, from others, and yourself when you are consistently focused on making other people happy and not yourself, um, instead of seeing others' dissatisfaction as an issue that they should take upon themselves to fix, um, you internalize it, interpret it to mean that, well, I wasn't good enough to fix that. Like, I know I have personally have thrived off of making other people happy. I definitely would consider myself a servant at heart which I don't necessarily think is a bad thing, but it does open the door for others to see that. And if you are consistently being that reliable person who's always offering to, oh, I'll help with this, or I'll help with that, or I'll help you do this, or I'll do that for you. If you're constantly, excuse me, if you are constantly being that person 
who is always wanting to volunteer to do this and that or whatever for other people so they don't have to do it, that can definitely open the door for people to use you or take advantage of you, which I have definitely experienced my fair share of. I feel like I was definitely usually that person that would put in the majority of the effort when it came to group projects in high school and even college. I remember one of my first experiences in college being I was in a Shakespeare class and I was in a group for a video project. We had to do a video project and recreate a scene from a certain play, um, Shakespearean play, and we had to redo the scene, do all the lines, um, even make our own costumes, do all the video editing, and then write like an 8 to 10 page paper analyzing the scene and why we chose it and all that stuff. And I remember thinking, okay, cool, because I actually really enjoyed the class. It was a great class and there were a lot of good people in that class. Um, our groups were assigned and of course I was a freshman at the time and it was my first semester of college so I was already kind of nervous. I remember I was in a group with four other seniors and being a freshman you kind of look up to these seniors and think okay well they've been around the block, they know what they're doing here and you feel like they would be able to pull their own weight and do their own portion of the work but they short long story short they really did not and I remember being so stressed out about that project but I was always too afraid to tell our professor that because you don't want to be like a person who tattles you don't want to be a person who is rocking the boat that's a common phrase you hear when people are describing people pleasers they don't want to rock the boat they don't want other people to get mad at them or be upset with them because that gives us such crazy anxiety like I cannot tell you the amount of times I have agonized over possibly thinking oh did I upset them did I make them mad at me stuff like that it's very real and it's very hard to deal with and it definitely weakens your confidence it definitely weakens you and I'm still trying to learn to correct that and find healthy ways to deal with that but um trying to shorten that story up a little bit. The project ended up getting finished and it turned out very well, but it took me being the one to basically be the mother hen of this group, keep everyone else in line, and even doing some of the work for another team member that was consistently making excuses and not doing um, her fair share of the work. It was a very tough project to get through. It turned out fine in the end, but it was very emotionally draining, mentally draining for me especially, and I just remember feeling so relieved when it was over thinking, okay, I can finally relax, I can finally rest now, we got a good grade. But it wasn't rewarding in the sense that I thought, well, it wasn't a fair process. Like, I had to do the work, and it just wasn't fair to me. And that's something that I have definitely dealt with over the years that I've kind of realized now that dang this really does suck the energy out of you when you're constantly doing stuff to make others happy or doing things because they may not want to do it you take that upon yourself and you're like oh yes of course I'll do it and you expect it to make you feel better thinking oh I helped this person I saved the day I did this and that and you usually tend to thrive off that but over time over time it's just so draining to you into your mind, to your body, to your character, and then you're like left with the shell of what was and you're just like, dang, what have I been doing this whole time? I could have been doing certain other different things um, that would have made me happier rather than worrying about someone else and what I thought I should be doing in order to make them happy instead of myself. Um, in most cases, which I can definitely understand, people-pleasing behaviors are usually rooted in anxiety and fear. We kind of think about the origins of like where did this like people-pleasing persona come from and it's usually rooted somewhere in childhood. Um, I know I've read different accounts, different articles of where people have grown up in homes that maybe what you, you would consider broken homes um, where as when they were children they may have had a mother and father who were in a very unstable relationship, maybe even an abusive relationship, and say if that child had a concern or a problem, 
they may not have necessarily wanted to voice that problem because they thought, well, I don't want to be a burden to this family more so than what's already going on. I did grow up in a very good household, but we were also expected to behave a certain way and to be disciplined in a certain way. And I can definitely see the perspective of when other people grow up in a certain environment to where you may feel like you constantly have to please your parents or please um, other people in order to be praised. And I think over the years I've kind of thrived off of that praise. Like, of course, you, you love to feel good when you know you've done something right. You love to feel good when someone appreciates what you're doing. But when you're constantly thriving off of that, it creates this the sense of where you're placing what makes you happy in the hands of other people instead of yourself, which I think at this point it can be become dangerous because at this point you're kind of thinking, well now what really does make me happy? Like is it me doing this because someone else wanted me to do it even though I may not have really wanted to? Or does it make me happy because I genuinely, it was something that I wanted to do? I was reading an article by a PhD and psychologist, Eileen Cohen. She was kind of writing an article about people pleasing behaviors and giving yourself love and respect. And I kind of wrote down certain things that I kind of rehashed from these articles that I read. But um, she was making some really good points when she was talking about giving yourself love and respect. And um, here's what she had to say. You aren't giving yourself love and respect when doing things for others that they avoid doing for themselves, when you don't speak up when your boundaries have been violated, when you say yes but when you, you really want to say no, when you internalize others' dissatisfaction and take it on as your problem, and of course when you hurt yourself to make others happy. All of these I can definitely relate to. Um, I have consistently been that person that I would sometimes feel like, okay, so if I say how I'm really feeling, that's just going to kind of bring the mood down. Um, I'm just going to be an emotional burden to somebody else. They don't need to deal with that. Let me just worry about their problems. And if I fix their problems and make them happy, then I'll be happy. But then over time, like I mentioned before, it's just been so draining to me. And then I'm just kind of thinking to myself, Am I really happy? No, I'm probably not. No, I'm not happy. Um, obviously there are dangers with people pleasing like emotional suppression, which can obviously result in anxiety, depression, mental breakdowns, which I have definitely had my fair share of. Um, you have an extreme pressure to keep up appearances as well as be an open target for people to use you. Um, People pleasers usually tend to be a target for narcissists, for emotional vampires, um, bullies, etc. And people pleasing, which I could understand this, people pleasers can also be seen as liars. And they're not necessarily lying to gain advantages or for malicious reasons, but because they're terrified of displeasing others. And I can personally say I've done that before. I have told white lies along the lines to where I thought, well, if I say this um, instead of what I really would like to say, this person won't be mad at me because I can't tell you how much anxiety I have had over the years to where if I thought someone was the slightest bit mad at me, I would worry myself literally sick to the point where I would be throwing up in the bathroom because I was terrified of what they might think of me, of what they might say or do, and I just, I couldn't handle that. And so I would be in the bathroom throwing my, throwing my guts up because I was just terrified of that anxiety. It has definitely been a rocky road so far. and. I honestly, like I mentioned earlier, I haven't necessarily realized that this had been a problem until just these past couple years. My last year of college or so, I was going through a really rough patch. It was a very emotionally traumatizing season of my life um, for different reasons, which I'd rather not go into in this video. But um, it was definitely a challenging time. And... 
yes, I made it through my last year of college. Yes, I graduated nursing school. Yes, I became an RN at one of the best hospitals in the Eastern Tennessee region. That's all great. And I love my life. I don't necessarily want to change anything, but there have just been instances along the way to where I have comp compromised my feelings, my self-worth, my self-respect for the sake of others just to please them, just to make them happy, just because I think, well, if I do this for them, they'll do this for me, which most of the time they usually don't return the favor. That's something else that I can probably go into a whole nother video with, but um, as a people pleaser, you definitely are left with feelings of you're doing all of this stuff constantly for all these other people. What are you left with? Like, are they doing anything in return for you? Are they reciprocating what you've done for them with the same energy, the same um, providity? Are they doing that? Usually not. And that's something that I've had to deal with as well, which is also as emotionally and mentally draining. Um, recently, though, I've kind of started researching and listening to um, other people speak on the subject of how they're recovering from people-pleasing behaviors. And... Um, like I said, it's definitely a learning process for me. It's something that I'm consistently having to grow with and deal with and learn because it's something that I know can't necessarily be fixed overnight because these behaviors have been ingrained in me for such a long time at this point to where I can't just say, okay, I'm done. I'm like, I'm full, I'm full of all the self-love, self-respect. I am taking time for me now and everyone else can put it aside. Like, that's not how it is. It's definitely a process and, um... I'm going to try to keep just keep learning, keep sharing as I go. Um, but some general tips that I've kind of seen in all of the research and like things that I've looked at, um, just a general consensus would include first discover what is most important to you. And of course you need to create boundaries because if you don't create boundaries and let people know what those are early on, they will walk all over you as they see fit and you'll feel powerless and just continue to let them walk over you like the little doormat you are, which I have definitely been there. Um, I think one of the biggest things that I'm definitely having to learn and deal with is, of course, learning to say no. No used to be such a scary word for me. If people asked me to do certain things, I would almost always feel obligated to say yes, even if I maybe had a prior commitment to where I may not be able to do the task that they asked me to do, or even if it was something that I honestly was uncomfortable with, I would say yes to it anyway because I would compromise my comfort for their comfort. I didn't want to be someone who made them upset or rocked the boat. I just wanted them to be happy. And it has definitely bitten me in the butt a few times. Um, so learning to say no has definitely been a process. I'm still at a point to where I sometimes feel extreme discomfort with saying it because I still have that anxiety thinking, oh gosh, what are they going to say to me? Are they going to hate me? Are they going to be mad at me for it? And it's just something that I've had to learn to deal with and just realize and tell myself, listen, it's okay to say no. You can say no in a very graceful, very nice way. Um, and if that person is kind of put off by it, that is their issue. I've tried to learn to not agonize over something that I may not be able to control in regards to that person. Um, another thing that I am definitely guilty of and a lot of other people pleasers are guilty of is saying I'm sorry constantly. I'm definitely one of those people that even when I have absolutely nothing to apologize for, I'll be like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And um, that's just a repetitive habitual behavior that I've also kind of learned to try to tone down a little bit. Because I've gotten called out on a million times. They're like, well, why are you apologizing? You have nothing to apologize for. And I get that. But you still have that mentality. You still have that anxiety that sits in there and you're just like, you don't, you just don't want anybody to think you're rocking the boat or thinking that you're wanting to cause discourse. You don't want people to be upset with you or be mad at you. And so you're consistently apologizing for things that maybe weren't even your fault or weren't even within your control. 
and so that's another thing that I've kind of been learning to use less of and usually try to save save the I'm sorry's for when you really need to apologize instead of just saying it as a habit honestly I mean this video in itself has probably been a little jumbled I'm definitely not used to being in front of the camera I am I've always been much more a, of a writer and writing has something that's been usually in my comfort zone but this is just a topic that I kind of wanted to speak on and touch on a little bit and just kind of discuss because it's something that I definitely still struggle with and I see a lot of other people struggling with and it's something that I would like to keep talking about. I appreciate you all, whoever you are, for listening. But you can always comment on this video or if you would like to PM me, that is fine too. Um, I apologize that this video came off disconcerting or, anything, or disjointed at times. I'm clearly not used to being on the camera, so thank you for bearing with me. But I um, appreciate you all for listening and have a good night.